guys uh, today's video is on the basic operator controls that you find on the marine radar used on ships and uh, how the use of each control influences the radar presentation as you see on the CRT or the cathode ray tube or the screen of the radar At today's presentation I will be talking mainly about four basic controls that is the brilliance control, the gain switch, the tuning switch, and the STC. And the STC stands for the sensitivity time control switch, in which I'll be talking about the C clutter and the rain clutter switches and what they are for. I will, of course, uh, start with the basic on, off, and a standby, and then move into these controls. All right, so the basic switches are, of course, the on switch, uh, which after you press, for it takes a, a while for the radar to switch on it initially is on the standby mode uh, or you can go into the standby mode from the on switch which keeps the radar ready to be used but uh, it's on a standby mode so especially when you are departing from the port uh, and you are doing your bridge control test then you switch on the radar just to make sure that everything is working and then you put it on the standby mode because you don't want to overuse the radar uh, because you do all the bridge control test before you depart at least one and a half hours to two hours before you depart you should check the radar because it takes time for it to switch on uh, but you keep it on standby mode if you are not using it but you want to keep it ready for use and then of course you have the off switch you off switch uh, you use it as you probably know to switch off the radar and then of course when you switch on the radar you can have the option of using the short pulse or the long pulse depending on the range the, of scale that you want to use now naturally when you're departing from the port initially you are always on a short range scale and it's only when you go into the sea and you want an early detection of uh, targets you use the uh, higher range scale. all right uh, then i move on to the first control uh, that i want to talk about today and that is the brilliant switch which basically uh, is used to govern the brightness of the radar picture display CRT. So when I say CRT, I, say, I mean the cathode ray tube, which is like the screen of the radar. Uh, the brilliance control is of course used as per the operator's uh, preference. Uh, you can adjust it as per your preference, whether you want it too bright or not so bright. And uh, each operator has their own preference and that is what it is used for. Uh, the screen here today, I'll just show you an example of how you can see the two uh, different uh, brilliance scale, uh, control being used, the two different examples. In one, you see that it's much brighter than the other. Here you can see that then the trace becomes visible depending on how bright this is. If you keep the brilliance control completely turned down, then of course you will not be able to see the uh, targets of the trace. The next switch is of course the gain switch, uh, which is used to control the overall amplification of all the returned echoes to enable the operator to see the targets on the display. Uh, the gain switch basically amplifies all the returned echoes. That means the when you switch on the radar, the radar sends the radio waves to the target and then receives the echo back but the echo received sometimes may not be very strong uh, for it to be processed and displayed on the screen. But what the gain switch does is it does it, it amplifies the echo that makes it stronger for it to be processed uh, and to be displayed on the screen. As you probably see here on the screen. All right, so you can see how the use of the gain switch kind of amplified the target and made it more visible uh, more easier for the uh, operator to see it on the screen to distinguish its features and understand its shapes uh, and, and get an assessment of it. Uh, then we have the rain scale switches. The rain scale switch, like I said, is basically used to adjust the range that you want to set on the radar. Uh, you can use the long range scanning, especially if you are into sea, you are in the middle of the ocean and you want to detect big targets early on. But if you have been coasting or you are running into fishing traffic or you are approaching the port, 
uh, you normally keep uh, one of the radars on the uh, shorter range to track the targets which are close to you because if you keep it on a long range sometimes the smaller targets go undetected because of the radio waves uh, that are being sent uh, with the, the kind of uh, uh, amplitude that reaches far instead of the shorter range scale but when you set it on a shorter range scale then of course uh, the the radio waves are aimed at nearby targets and you receive the echo quicker i'll talk about all that in my next video presentation where i talk about the the pulse used and the pulse repetition frequency how the pulse length and how the uh, radar magnetron works and how we choose the long range and the short range but uh, this is only about the radar control so i don't want to go too deep into that here all right uh, so you can see here that uh, depending on whether you want to uh, get the closer target or the far away target you change the range scale and what you saw here on the screen is the, the the first screen that you saw the target was seemed much closer but it's it's but because it was on a long range but uh, because the target was close to our ship we should keep it on a shorter range because we can then assess and distinguish the features of the target or the landmass or the shape whatever it is uh, more clearly so normally on the ships we have two radars or two arpas on and one radar is kept on a long range scanning and then the other one is kept on a short range scanning and of course it again depends on the operators or the masters or the officer on watches preference and depends on the situation in which you are in uh, you should be able to do that and then we move on to the tuning switch the tuning switch actually converts the transmitted or the received frequency of the radio wave back to a lower or intermediate frequency to allow amplification of a returned echoes uh, it is uh, used to produce the best, best picture possible uh, the tuning control is also used as a, a fine tuning so what we say is we make the picture finer to see uh, and it becomes more clearer in terms of uh, its shape size etc then finally we have the sensitivity time control or the stc uh, it is a, a form of a, a swept gain control which uh, turns down the gain in the area of the screen where c clutter echoes are found uh, and this is also known as the c clutter control uh, but remember the clutter controls are of two types uh, the clutter control is there for the C clutter as well as the rain clutter control. So we'll talk a little bit about. Uh, so as you know that uh, the C clutter control, what it does is it deamplifies the echo starting from the center. So it, uh, what happens is because the the radio waves that are being sent by the radar scanner, uh, if you have high seas and swells. Uh, those waves also hit the high seas and swells and kind of reflect that picture back onto the radar screen and uh, because of those echoes received from the high seas and swells the nearby targets which are there assuming that your of course a ship is at the center of the screen the nearby targets may get lost in the uh, the echo received from the waves and the swells to de-amplify these echoes, you use the C clutter control because what it does is it get, it removes the echoes received from these uh, high seas and waves and swells and it allows the targets which are getting lost in this uh, to emerge clearly for the operator to, the, to see. Uh, same thing you can see here, I'm showing you the difference. In the first screen, the C clutter was probably off. You can see that the C clutter surrounded the center of the radar screen, which does not allow the smaller targets, especially or the targets nearby to be picked up. But as soon as uh, the C clutter was used, you can see that the center of the radar screen cleared up and it would pick up any uh, smaller targets or any targets which, are, uh, which were uh, hidden by the C clutter before. Uh, you have to be a bit careful when using this C clutter switches uh, because uh, if you use too much of C clutter, not only with the echo from the C's will go, but also your target may disappear. So you have to use it 
uh, very carefully and adjust in such a way that there's some kind of light speckling there and the same is thing with the gain as well the gain switch also if you use too much of the gain uh, is the, it will not be good it will over amplify the echoes or you will see too much of uh, uh, echoes being picked up or you will your scene your screen will get all cluttered so you have to use it uh, at a setting where you can find its most optimum to be able to see some kind of light speckling of the sea and also the target as well something very similar is with the rain clutter of course so what you see on the screen uh, as the kind of a pink purplish shadow on the screen that is uh, the rain so maybe some heavy rains are coming in or cloud uh, showers are coming in through the clouds uh, the sea the ray the radars will pick it up uh, the radio waves will reflect of this rain and pick it up and display it on the screen and again the any target in that area will then get hidden because of the rain that is being displayed on the screen so again you use the rain clutter to reduce the impact or uh, or reduce the the presentation of the rain on the screen so that you can see you can detect the targets which are in that area and it becomes clearer to the operator again if you use too much of the rain clutter the target will disappear as well all right so here we kind of modify in the echo pulse to ensure that the rain is there you can see it as a light speckling but you can also pick up the target which is hidden behind it don't use it too much otherwise like i said the target would also disappear you have to use it at an optimum setting where you can see some light speckling of the rain as well as the target something like this that you see all right so you can see as soon as the rain clutter was used you can see how the target which is uh, indicated by the yellow dot on the radar screen uh, kind of loses its uh, shape a little bit because part of it uh, starts to disappear and that is what i meant is that if you use too much of it uh, the targets especially the smaller ones will disappear as well so use it at an optimum level where you can see some light speckling that you see on the screen you can see the rain but it is at least not covering up the targets which are in that area so that's pretty much it for me from my side today and uh, i will uh, put up more presentations about the radar um, as and when i make them thanks guys and see you soon